What do you stand for? Or more importantly, when and where? While we've been socially distancing at home, our empty streets and public spaces have become a political site of contestation. The right to protest publicly and questions about what public monuments represent our history have been triggered by events across the globe since COVID-19 pandemic, highlighting the racial inequalities in today's society as a result of our colonial past. This is a call to artists. How do we tell our histories, create a culture of change and find the practical steps to move forward? And what part are we the monument to this moment? My art practice finds connection with the overlooked histories of people, objects and places, seen through my own biographical storytelling and sense of self. I explore how my race, gender, class and sexuality align with historical figures to bridge the gap between the past, how these ideas are held in the present and how they are developed in the future. In my project towards Memorial, I explored the remaking, gifting and wearing of sandals once designed and handmade by the gay socialist activist Edward Carpenter, who lived in Millthorpe just outside of Sheffield in the late 1800s. After gifting the sandals, made by Noble and Wiley, to the Friends of Edward Carpenter, a group of activists who wanted to commission a permanent public memorial to Carpenter in Sheffield City Centre, the artwork developed alongside their ambitions. The sandals sparked discussion and debate about the commissioning of public statues and monuments. Through a series of films made by Picture Story Productions, I started to think about the sandals themselves when gifted and worn as an alternative form of public memorial. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, the Black Lives Matter and Roads Must Fall movements have intensified. The public protests and demonstrations by activists calling for the removal of public statues relating to Britain's colonial past. This prompted me to think about alternative ways of memorial making, looking at the more intimate, interpersonal gestures of social art practice and the potential of collaboration, co-design and community participation. This was driven by my wanting to wrestle the conversation away from the culture wars debate and party politics and to actively bring in artists from different perspectives into the discussion. For example, Paul Harfleet's Pansy Project. Paul plants a pansy in the place where people have experienced homophobic abuse. Ryan Lettner's Strange Inheritance. Ryan physically cleans and ritually cares for public memorials to the AIDS crisis in the US. Jeremy Della's We're Here Because We're Here, where actors dressed as soldiers in uniform disrupt people's everyday encounters and commemorates the anniversary of the Battle of Somme and Anthony Gormley's One Another, which invites hundreds of members of the public to occupy the space of the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square for an hour each. These examples ask how we demonumentalize the moment, how we reconcile our collective histories and how our bodies are central to the problem and the solution. Because for me, artists are at the center of this process as the makers of these contested artworks and experiences in public space and the power in the art objects themselves as they become the focal point to where public protests congregate. During the making of Towards Memorial between 2016 and 19, a reoccurring image had developed where I or participants would step up onto a makeshift platform or plinth. The idea began while in the Sheffield City archives holding a paper pattern that described the shape and size of Edward Carpenter's foot and as if holding the actual foot I imagined him stood on the tabletop where I sat. This idea developed when gifting the sandals to participants in their own homes and it suggested the possibility of their own bodies replacing the bodies of authorised statues and monuments in public space. I also think of Majid Majid when photographed as the new mayor of Sheffield, Majid took to a makeshift platform, a balustrade on the town hall steps, showing his trademark Dr. Martin boots. He was consciously marking a change in the city's history. We had become the monument and therefore we had become the memorial. Fast forward to the summer of 2020, I was watching over and over the footage of the Black Lives Matter protesters tearing down the Colson statue in Bristol. Some were pulling the ropes, noose around the statue, some chanting, encouraging the act. The majority recording the event on their phones. When the statue fell, 
some seized onto the fallen monument and one activist jubilantly jumped onto the empty plinth. The aftermath of the statue's removal led the artist Mark Quinn to temporarily occupy the space of the empty plinth with a statue of the activist Jen Reed, a black body co-opted by an established white male artist in a gesture that demonstrated his privilege. And the subsequent protection of statues and monuments linked to Britain's colonial past boarded up, created new temporary monolith structures to protect the monument, surrounded by protesters and their own placards in protest. So the empty plinth has become a potent symbol of what has been, where we are now and what could be. What do we want to do with these statues and monuments? Remove them, replaque them or replace them? In a new artwork titled The Human Memorial, I've made portable plinth that I push and drag around the places and spaces of our colonial past. The plinth helps me to ask individuals, communities and the wider public about what they stand for, where and when and what and how and importantly who should be commemorated. So if you see me, stop me, step up, speak out and make a stand. We have become the monument and therefore we have become the memorial.